Tom Matuska once again here with our Thursday afternoon live with Brett Wingfield, Mandy Swart, said it right, said it right <laughs> this time, didn't I? Uh, and our camera girl, Kirsten. And uh, if you remember last week, we uh, uh, demonstrated how to make a pattern, an accurate pattern. We used this largemouth bass, or a couple weeks ago, I think it was. Yeah. Um, and we got as accurate of measurements as we could, you know, right to the eighth. Um, posed the fish on the paper the way we wanted it. We filled that in with one of the uh, black um, grease pencils, they're called. <clears throat> and with that pattern, we traced it onto a piece of um, lightweight carving foam. This is a, about a pound and a half density foam. And it's very helpful. Um, Brett carved this for us when we did it. And it's very helpful to get your body real close before you start skinning the fish because you can always take your calipers, check your body, compare it to the fish which is laying right here, um, rather than even having to use your measurement. So it's kind of a, uh, a little bit faster method. And then you can compare your body shape to the fish. Um, so this is a, a roughed, roughed out body, it's pretty close. It would make a nice fish the way it is. We'll put a wire out the back of it and things like that, but for right now, um, we're going to dispense with the body. We'll usually take these, pin the pattern onto the, the mannequin, put that aside, double check. I always like to double, double check my directions. Um, you don't want to mess things up, you know, mix things up and, and do the wrong fish in the wrong pose. So I have the directions and this is, um, his choice was something that looks nice. Um, that gives us a lot of leeway, and I think with that that body and some nice habitat and um, a mediocre skin job by me, we <laughs> might be able to make it something that looks nice. So always double check. Now, this fish I think is going to be head out. It's an S curve. Head out. Head's going to be to the right, and the tail's going to be in a little bit. That means that this is the backside of my fish. I always. Compare the body, double check, flip him over. I'm gonna cut on his left side, is that right? Yes, for head out. For head out. For cut line. And I always like to check, check, double check because you don't wanna get the fish half skin and the customer said, you know, pose it the other direction. Then you're gonna have to make up some story that a lamprey got him on that side or something. <laughs> um, so to start with, we use a whole lot of different tools in um, fish skinning and and I kind of have my favorites um, one of them and Mandy has a whole bunch of favorites here lined up for you to see <clears throat> for a scissors that I use I like to use um, these whisk snips and they're spring-loaded brand new they look something like that and they're exceptional to use with for older people that have decrepit hands and <laughs> nerve damage and carpal tunnel and everything that taxidermists get. Um, to start with, I'm gonna lift up my gill plate and I'm gonna go way up underneath the gills and this is a real soft, soft skin. I'm gonna cut with, the, with snips way up to the, from the throat latch, this soft skin all the way around and up under the in front of the cleath and bone under the gill flap up in here. That's gonna be a, I call it a C cut. It's gonna be a big arcing cut. So we're gonna do that first. I'm gonna leave my throat attached, my throat latch attached if I can. I don't wanna to go too deep. Now once I get started, um, I'm gonna to have to work like crazy to get this done. So um, Mandy and Brett are gonna carry on a conversation while, while I keep skinning. <laughs> Um, okay, now I've separated that, that skin. My next cut is going to be right through the cleatherm bone. And I usually go, this is going to be a regular wall mount. It's going to, you know, one side, it's going to be a, I always tell my customers that I will finish the fish um, three-fourths of the way. You know, there is going to be a work surface on the back that we're going to make look commercially acceptable, but it's not by any means going to be a double-sided fish. Um, I'm going to cut through the cleatherm bone down the center of the fish all the way to where the meat quits in the tail. And that cleatherm bone is a little, you have to crunch through it. And I don't want to cut too deep. I don't want to go into his innards, so I'm keeping my scissors tip shallow. 
and you jump in if you have a better way of telling them. I mean, they can. Oh, no, you're doing great. They would like comment any of your questions. We go live every Thursday at four thirty Central. Um, ask your comments if you have any, and the guys will answer. Jeff says, "Smile, Mandy." Jeff Speck, I have been smiling all day, and my jaw hurts, but I will try really hard for you in the next hour. But um, yeah, let us know your questions, and we'll definitely answer them. We'll do a giveaway, so stay tuned at the end. We'll have a giveaway. Okay, now the next uh, tool that I like to use for fish, um, it's just out of habit. This used to be called the Deem Skinning Knife, D-I-E-H-M. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it right, but this knife has been around since I done tax for me for 40 years and it's kind of serrated almost like a grapefruit knife makes it more difficult to cut through the skin and do damage this is another a different version um, these come in right hand and left hand models and I think there's is there two sizes yeah large of these? and small, large and small. Um, this is what I'm used to and I like to use that I also like to uh, have borax on my hands for grip and we're gonna put on some little rubber gloves, some latex gloves, keep my hands smelling beautiful. My wife used to complain and then the more fish we did, the more money we made and she would compare it to like, you know, people that raise pigs, it's the smell of money. So I convinced her that if my hands smell like fish, that was a good thing. Uh, <laughs> Okay, scales lay in here like shingles. And you know, one overlaps the other over the other over the other. Some fish, it makes no difference at all what direction you go. Um, on a crappie, I would always wanna go from, get in the habit of going from the tail towards the head, and you won't catch those scale pockets and flip them the wrong, wrong way. So I'm gonna just dip my fingers in a little borax, hold the seam open, and start sawing in this this um, skinning knife creates a pocket real fast so you can grab onto the skin. And I'm just working my way towards the head. I would like to keep as much meat with the carcass and the least amount of meat on the skin as possible. That will save me a whole lot of unnecessary scraping and wear and tear on the skin later. Lemley says, hi, Tom. Doug Dexter says, good afternoon. Holly just said, hey, guys. Jeff Speck says, smile, Andy. Um, well, Brian Billings, hello. Mark Trask, hi. Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for tuning in because hearing those names uh, makes this a whole lot more fun for us. Um, Ron Hawkins wants to know if you sell a video on this. And we don't, but this is it. <laughs> this is it. And you can always go back to our Facebook page. Make sure you're liking and following it because you'll get notified every time we go live on Thursdays. And then also you can go to our videos and rewatch all of them. I know they've done scale tipping, um, measuring, airbrush. We've been doing it since, I don't know if you can believe this, but since December every week. So we have quite a bit of videos and you can always go rewatch them. And you can even download them to your computer as well. You can? You can. That's pretty cool. Yeah. In Technicolor. Um, That's for you. Alan Jensen, you should make all the tools on the table a set to buy at once. Alan, you call me tomorrow and I will work out a deal for you with all those tools. <laughs> Mandy loves sets and kits. She, she will put a kit together for you I will. to skin a horse. Holy cow. You're making time here. Well, I don't skin a lot of fish anymore, to be real honest. <laughs> You're doing pretty good, though. Holly Jessa says, are crappie typically harder to do than bass for skin mounts? Um, yes. yes. They are. <laughs> um, go ahead and tell them your options for crappies. There's some things that can help you. Um, skinning them without aid is difficult. Very difficult. Um, you want to set yourself up for success with crappies. Crappies are something that are going to make you a really good fish skinner. If you can skin a crappie, you can skin anything. Um, but you're going to want to do some things a little bit more delicately than you would on anything else. Um, 
a couple options. You can dry the fish, um, air dry them. I've seen some pretty air dried fish that I think it's kind of hard on the epidermis, but that and they tends to help. Dry the skin before they yeah. ever, dry the deceased fish before they ever start skinning, right? Yep, yep. Um, um, you can also use denatured alcohol. Um, denatured alcohol tightens the skin, kind of holds those scales a little bit tighter and that accompanied by some delicate fingers, you can usually get that body out. Um, but probably the most successful way that we've seen um, or aid in skinning crappies or white bass um, is Elmer's glue. Where did you learn that Elmer's glue trick? I, pretty I think I probably read it in a magazine and it's, uh, it is hugely successful, um, but it's a hassle, it's time consuming. Paint the whole fish with Elmer's glue straight out of the bottle, um, put it in front of a fan, it'll take an hour and a half to dry, and two coats really guarantee success. Dry them really good. We just had a student, um, D2, uh -huh. uh, just skinned one of his very white, first white, white bass, bass yeah. um, one of his very first fish ever, and I think you owe him 25 bucks. If, uh, if students um, can skin a crappie without losing a scale, and when I'm talking about losing scales, I'm not worried about the back. They're gonna lose them there for sure. I'm talking about this big triangle right here um, where they, clean my poor little fish up. Um, that people are gonna see. This is where I don't wanna lose any scales. And um, we're gonna have to discontinue that because since we've been doing the Elmer's glue thing, um, they've been pretty successful. I know, it's not very hard. Is that what you had the fish hanging up in there? Yes, The yes. white stuff is all yeah. different now. Yeah, it's like stalactite stripping off of it. Yeah. That's Elmer's glue, huh? Okay, just now let me, let me stop you for just a second here. I'm See how clean I'm getting that skin? It's not gonna take a lot of um, scraping. I am going to have to get all this tissue, but it's going to be a lot easier than having a half inch of meat on there. But now I'm about as far as I can go. I am up to my fin bases where the actual rays of the fin go into the spine. Um, I'm up in the head about as far as I can go, and I've gone down to the anal fin, and I am also at the tail about as far as I can go. So now it's time to, with my scissors, I'm going to go in and I'm going to snip those rays where they join the body. I've got a diagram on the board of that initial incision. Um, this would, that would be the one through the scales and the C cut. Now Tom's gonna take on the inside and cut through the fin rays to detach everything. And it's helpful to hold your fingers underneath. So if you feel cold steel, you know that you went a little too far. Good incentive to be careful. Mm -hmm. Scott Hodgkin says this is super relaxing to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what you're watching. <laughs> I what think Cersei would beg to differ. <laughs> yeah, I've never been up close and personal when you did this before, so. I was um, doing good. <laughs> wondering as I'm snipping what Mandy's face is doing back there. What? Um, well, Jeff told her to smile. <laughs> I wasn't, so if that tells you anything. <laughs> I am sitting a ways away. Rob Sunday. maybe says, forgot it was Thursday. <laughs> TGIT. Tom Tom's Thursdays. Yep. Mm -hmm. So now you're disconnecting the dorsal fins? Yep, I'm on the soft dorsal. And it's easiest if I go from tail towards head. Um, it's easy for me. You'll come up with your own favorite. Seems to help a lot for delicate fish, too, to go tail to head. Um, now I'm about as far as I can go. This <laughs> pleatherm bone is is hindering me. So I'm gonna go up sideways under here and I'm actually gonna snip this loose. That's Gary, funny. Um, Gary Stoll says, I didn't know that crappies were so difficult to deal with. So do you remove the Elmer's glue after or leave it? Maybe talk the Elmer's glue process a little bit. Yeah. So after, after you Elmer's glue the skin and let it dry, dry good, you can skin the fish as you would normally, making the same incisions that Tom's making. Um, on a crappie, Kirsten, if you can look at the board, show the board here. On a crappie, sometimes it helps to make an additional incision up here, a T incision at the base of the tail, that will just help the skin lay open. And another good incision is right up here. And I'm drawing on our bass diagram, so 
but if this were a crappie, you can make a little incision up here above the head and it allows this skin to open up nice and easily. Um, then you would skin it just like Tom's doing, being extremely careful um, with the Elmer's glue dry on the side of the fish. Um, the next the next thing you would do is scrape it, as he's going to show you here in a minute. And Come then in after, it. okay, <laughs> free. Um, after all of that is taken care of, then we're going to rinse the Elmer's glue off. So we're going to soak the fish, and it, it might take an hour to soak in regular um, room temp water, and that Elmer's glue will just peel off, and uh, hopefully in one big piece, a couple pieces. Now, I would like to get this skin rolled over here and when I say roll you don't want to you don't want to fold the skin or make any sharp bends in it so I would like the skin no matter what fish it is especially a loose scaled fish like a crappie or white bass or a grayling I would like this skin to roll over like that without creasing it and you won't lose any scales to do that <clears throat> I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to go up underneath the shoulders up here all the way into the head under the skin and I'm going to try to separate the skin and the skull from the body that I'm attempting to get out. Now occasionally when I'm doing this, I will punch a hole through the top of the head and... Uh, but this is Facebook Live. You I know, do that on this but one. beginners may panic at that and say, oh my gosh, what are you gonna do? Um, we're pretty good with epoxy putty and things like that and it, it is easy to fix. Okay, now, <clears throat> I've loosened this all the way up here. The next cut I'm gonna make is I'm gonna sever the spinal cord from the head. <laughs> the camera girl eyes got about as big as a tarpon. And then I'm gonna cut the meat. <laughs> so when you go in the spinal column, it sits just above the esophagus. And you'll feel it. It'll be on a fish like this. What would you say about the size of your index finger? Yeah. Little finger. So you'll feel it with the with the scissors, and you'll just go through and sever it. Now I put a little borax on the table because I'm gonna <clears throat> prop him up like this, and it's gonna help hold his belly from sliding all over. Now we're gonna go down the show side of the fish. Tom's gonna show you scraping this in a minute. It makes me really <laughs> nervous, I gotta um, hurry. Um, is it possible to remove the feed? Yes, if you, on your Facebook live videos, guys, when you're watching, if you can't see what's going on, if you swipe the comments to the right, it will show the full screen. If you want them back, swipe to the left. Swipe to the right, gone. Swipe to the left, there. So you can do that to see more of the that sounds like a line dance. <laughs> <laughs> Jody Dozer says, hello, and can you start over? I'm late. No worries. <laughs> no worries if you're late. You can, as soon as we're done, you can always go back and rewatch it as many times as you want, and you can always catch all the other ones that we've done since December every Thursday on our Facebook page videos. And Mandy promises to smile on the replay. <laughs> Probably <yeah. laughs> Best I can. No, fish over here. Um, so we've got quite a few different fish skinning tools. Should we go through sure. those real quick while you're going down the front side? Mm -hmm. Can we do that? Yep. Um, yes, please. You're going to have to help me with a couple of proper terms. You got it. Um, but we've got a couple of different styles of fish skinning knife. Tom is using this one today. That is a 030100, and it's 895 for that one. Um, and he's using that. That's a general purpose skinning knife. It's not super sharp. It is serrated. Now, would you use that just if you're a fisherman and skinning your fish to get the meat? Yes. That's what. Yeah. He, right? Oh, I thought you were going to devein shrimp or something. Like that. <laughs> no, no, I don't eat shrimp, so I'm not going to do that. I, I suppose you could. I suppose you could. I, I don't. I haven't done that, but um, we also have a pretty handy tool that he's going to show you in a few minutes. Um, before I get to that one, let's go to another style of fish skinning knife. This is another fish skinning knife here. It's a small version. This is small. This one's kind of cool. It's a little bit sharper. It's also serrated, but the serrations are smaller. Um, Allows for tight areas, access to tight areas in the head and fins. 
Yep, thin bases, it's a great one to get up in the cheeks, um, and that comes in a large and a small. 030, 110, and 111, and those are 1095. And those are pretty handy, I like those. Um, we also have two cheek tools. So basically the same concept as the previous two skinny knives, but these are designed a little with a little bit different shape that work really well up in the cheek. And Tom will show you that in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we've got some scrapers. We may come back to those when he gets to that part yeah. of that of the process. How are you doing over there? Mm, what about this stuff? Oh man, Timberwolf. Um, I wish they made a spray. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is actually a hand cleaner, waterless hand cleaner. It works very well at taking the smell of money off your hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that wonderful fish smell that you come home with every now and then. Um, and it actually works. Yeah. It's not just a... It, it, does it has a lot of purposes, Okay, yeah, it? this is crazy. Like repels, it's actually, mosquitoes. Yep. And... Kirsten was doing jalapeno peppers and got it in your hands and burned real bad and cut. She put it on. This took care of the burn. Um, it does work well. It repels mosquitoes, prevents and relieves poison ivy symptoms. It's biodegradable, contains no petroleum solvents. There was a whole list of other things it's for. Um, some of those... Um, Odor taker offers smell worse than odor, yeah. and this this doesn't. This is a pleasant smell. Guaranteed. I've tried getting you to carry snack. those little metal oh, yeah. rock things. Yeah. You know, I'm not so sure they don't work. Really? Yes. So we can carry them now. I. I think there's one. You that's gave me one in my anybody Christmas. Anybody uses those? Some kind like a metal Let us know if they work. I got one from Santa in my Christmas stocking one time. From somebody, Santa evidently thought I had smelly hands. And um, it later on, later on, I tried it, didn't think it worked very well. And I tried it about a month ago and I thought, I'm not sure this doesn't work. It's a little aluminum. So you still have it? Thing. Oh, yeah. Oh. So, Kirsten, from your side over there, what you can see, Tom's being very careful not to fold the skin or to crease it so, or kink it. I'm putting my fingers in here and separating it from the body a little bit. And, and notice he doesn't have any 90 degree angles where those scales would be okay. compromised. Perfect. Um, Jody is wondering, Ooh. explain the head junction. How much do you remove? Oh, <clears throat> a lot. Jody, for the commercial bodies that we carved and the body that we showed you the other day, um, we have a shelf on the top of the body that accommodates the skull. So this is this is where the meat quits, or this point here. This shelf goes to the center of the eye hole. So when you're looking at the mounted fish, the body, you should be able to get the entire body into the center of the, of the eye. So um, if, you're looking at, if you're looking at the fish, that is an awful lot. You're gonna remove That's a all lot of that skin. Yeah. I will tell you a little story. I have skinned fish for years and years and years and consider myself adequate at skin of fish. So Corey Carruthers was up here one time and I was working on a walleye and he said, how clean do you get your heads? And he was doing some of his bird products, some prototyping, and I said, oh, I think I get them pretty clean. He said, when you get ready to mount that fish and consider him done, can I look at him? And I said, sure. So I think I'm gonna do a really good job because he, you know, I'm gonna really impress him. And Corey is a bit of a perfectionist and he's a little difficult to impress. So when I thought I was really, really done, I worked on that head for another 10 minutes and I got way, way, way up there. And I thought, there, nobody gets their fish cleaner than that. And I said, okay, I'm done. He came over, he said, really? That's how you leave them? Yes, that's good. He said, you care if I work on it a little bit? And he took so much out of the head of the skull and the framework that it actually collapsed. I mean, he rebuilt the inside of the head out of clay. And I thought, oh my gosh, here I thought I was like the best fish skinner in the world, only to find out I wasn't even close. Thank goodness he's only doing birds these days. <laughs> okay, now I have, I skinned all the way around. I've got the fish pretty loosened up. Um, I've come to his pelvic fins, so I'm going to stick my finger on the back so I don't come through, and I'm going to loosen his, snip his pelvic 
spins as they attach. Now, I can always feel these scissors tips, and it doesn't take much to know if you're through or not. You'll know, you'll feel. Sometimes you'll see your own blood. <laughs> it's usually darker. <laughs> Comes with a little ouch. Ernest King says, Ernest Taxidermy from Jacksonville, North Carolina, checking in. North Carolina. We're located in Northwest Iowa. We love hearing where you guys are watching from, so let us know. Oh, tough bowl. <laughs> John Cranford just said he ordered two deer forms Monday for the first time, and we'll be excited to try them. Nice. Um, you will be, you will, yeah, let us know. Let us know, John, what you think. Okay, now I'm loose. I've cut my spine loose, cut my tail loose. One other thing that stops me from getting the body out <clears throat> is I have the whole throat and esophagus going from the head into the body. You can treat this in a couple different ways. Uh, you can leave the throat all the way in, leave it all in, and then scrape it up and clean it really, really well by putting, we put little fleshing tools down the throat and scrape it off. Um, otherwise, um, you can remove all that and build the throat on the mannequin. And we have found that to be a nice clean way to do it and to get, keep your, uh, clean up your fish real good and not have smells or bugs later on. So in that case, we would build the esophagus and inner mouth here and create an artificial part. Um, and then we can remove all of that from the interior. You should see Kirsten's face right now. She is <laughs> I might have to hold the camera for her. It's going to be okay. <laughs> Gary Stoll says, by the way, this is my first time watching. I know what my future Thursdays will entail. Nice. Welcome, yeah. Gary. <laughs> Every Thursday, 4.30 Central, we're going live and we're picking different things to watch. If you've missed them, you can always check them out on our Facebook video page But every Thursday. And uh, feel free to give us suggestions of what you'd like to see in the yeah. future. We got yeah. a turkey one. They want us to do turkey. Yep, we've got a few more parts to finish for this one too, um, if we carry this process through. Okay, I'm gonna remove the meat. Uh, when I first started, people were very adamant. They wanted their fish meat, and I would save it for them, but you have to realize, when they caught this fish, they paraded it to every bait shop, got their pictures taken, took it and showed it to grandma and grandpa and everything else, and that meat on those big fish hauling around the trunk of your car just aren't, isn't the best stuff anymore. So you're so, not gonna eat that, Jody says? <laughs> we tend not to. <laughs> Might have had this fish out a time or two earlier too. Okay, now this is the, his whole brisket, his chest, his throat area, and I'm going to, yeah, right here is where we're at, and I'm gonna peel that forward, and I have an assembly of bones in here. I have the cleathrum bone to cut on the other side. And if I can free that cleathrum bone, on some fish, bass being one of them, um, this throat area peels all the way up, and I'm not even gonna have to hardly scrape it. And you're using borax is what you're using to put on that? Yes, borax is a, I, I can't fish, I can't skin a fish without borax. Um, and this is powdered borax. It's not the kind, it's the same thing as you buy in the grocery store, the 20 mule team, but it's much finer, more of a powder. I tried making slime with it at home and it did not work. That's what you store. said. Really? It didn't work for me. I didn't know that. Okay, now I peel that all the way down that throat latch, bend the throat latch forward. If I get it all cleaned up, I can come in here and snip this. Oh. I know. Now, I took, I took that whole throat latch out of there. That's this piece here. This is a good thing to study for shape also. How good did Brett do? <laughs> Not very good. We gotta get smaller. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to um, go ahead and look at some tools and I'm gonna run this over to the sink and... and I'll clean up your counter while you're doing okay. that. You got some new products Mandy, to tell us about too, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, well, why don't we do our, um, our giveaway from last week's winner. Um, we gave away last week was the Vixen. Ooh. 
skinny knife and it came with the blades. Um, we will have another um, giveaway at the end, but you have to stay tuned to have a chance to win it. But um, the winner of this one is Kathy Call. So Kathy, when you watch this video, call tomorrow 1-800-488-3256 and talk to Kirsten for all your information and we will get this Vixen knife sent out to you. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. Ooh, new habitat. Oh, these are cool. The Matuska are, gang has been busting it. Yeah. Okay, so a couple of rock clusters sell like crazy. And it's just simple little pieces that are all, it's all one piece, but it looks like there's four rocks there. And then this one, and what's nice about it is you can add it to any piece of driftwood just on the side and piece them together. And you guys just do a couple screws in and it's done. Yeah, a couple screws, a um, little bondo. You can attach them with hot glue depending upon how big they are. Amber put these two to these two together, and they will work for I think pedestals. You can include them in some of your life size stuff. These are these are bigger pieces, so they're going to be fun. Yeah, very versatile. They're all online now, and you can also order them. This is a painted version, so we hand paint each one, or you can order a natural wash, which is less expensive, but kind of has the depth, but it's all one color looks like two-tone, but it's really yep. fun. That's one. Very exciting. I don't like to brag, but yeah, you do. we have the finest habitat, rock bases, <laughs> driftwood available on the market, and the price is so reasonable, and it's so easy to use. It's a good product. It is. That would be a, that'd be a really good live topic. We have. We could look do it on our, yep. Yep. Look on our Facebook videos. We're talking rocks and driftwood and habitat. This is all one piece, and... You can use it on the wall, or you can use it flat. This is a detailed one. Perfect size for a crappie. Great for a big crappie, a bass. Um, yep. Works really well with it. I think they're going to be working on a couple more sizes. This, for instance, this is um, fully painted. It's $45.95. Um, its number is RR106P. But again, you can buy it natural which is just a wash and that price is twenty three fifty. so very reasonable you add your own color scheme to it and then unpainted where you completely do all the painting is $19.95 so that's a pretty good deal there and then our newest driftwood rock combo this is all Ooh. one piece Can't wait to use and that one. these ones have wood on the back so you got wood and then easy assembly hanger all that stuff um, this is our weathered look. So this driftwood is kind of the weathered, washed look Which instead would be of the cedar. More of a gray instead yep. of the brown. Mm -hmm. And so this is fifty two ninety five. And again, wall, or you can lay it flat and have something coming off of it. Um, and then the natural is thirty two ninety five. And this number is R D W two o four W, and then the N for natural. But these are all available online if you go to www.matuskataxidermy.com and then on our supply part there's a place that says new products and on the new products what's new what's new what's new what's new all this stuff is new that is new new like just came out of the mold yeah. this week yep yeah. yep yeah. yeah. very cool Nana. yeah you got a little snoo on your shoulder i got what snoo what's that snoo what's that mean what's new nothing what's new with you <laughs> It's like, what are you uh, talking about? Kind of slow. <laughs> <From that. laughs> that. Okay, now, we have a lot of, hand me some of them scraper tools, I'll show them. Um, I am used to using my Chicago cutlery knife, razor sharp, like a, um, um, just as sharp as I can get it. I hold it perpendicular to the fish and then drag the blade just a little bit and follow the, the little tendons on the skin. And this is my method of scraping a fish. It works really well. Um, we also have- Don't a, let them use those. Those are new. I can't use them? Don't you have your own? Um, you might have, have one or two over there. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes, sell those. laughs> if your scraping tools smell like fish, we broke it in for you. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of, there's a big array. These are actually sculpting tools, but they work really good for getting into tight areas and you can even sharpen these with your Dremel tool. They, they do come, they're little ribbon steel. They do come kind of sharp already. Um, the object is to get 
the most meat off of your fish with the least amount of stress on your skin. If you have something really dull, I hear people scraping fish with um, spoons and butter knives. Oh. That means you have to go over that skin 150 times to take off what I can take off with one scrape. So sharp works the best, but all these little hoop Speaking scrapers are great. That Chicago is super sharp. I got, I got a hook on my hand from that Chicago cutlery knife. Yeah. What if it's not sharp though? I bet we have things to We help just make got, it yeah, yeah, we do. You are so good. <laughs> um, one of our new products in is our carbide sharpening and available in four colors. I think there's a couple sunflowers online, all online. But um, top sellers. The top seller, Love believe it. it or not, the top <laughs> seller is the leopard print for sure. Wow. I you're know. not gonna lose that in your toolbox. No, nope, you're not. But yeah, so four colors, and you've been using them up here, and they work good. And they were great. Um, and all you have to do. Mother's Day is coming up. Take this little guy. Add to a little basket with their sharpen air. And drag your knife blades right down through these carbide guides. And that's all you do. Yeah. And it sharpens it up pretty good. I got one for my kitchen knives, but I haven't done it yet. Look at, now that's sharp. Ooh, it's a turkey call. <laughs> uh, uh, for some of the more traditional guys that are still sharpening with steel, Got a sharpening steel. Yep. We still carry. This um, I can't. Stand. I can't do yeah. any cutlery work without a, my steel. Yep. And this I is heard that you're one of the best sh too. knife sharpeners around. I think it would be a great demo. I think it would be a really good life topic. Sharp tools are the key to taxidermy. They really are. Joe Martin says, "Love my sharpen air. What a great idea! Thanks, guys. Okay, yeah. Nice, nice. This hey. tool." This tool right here, without the fish guts on it. Here, hold it. Nope, I'm good. <laughs> um, is great for your jalapeno poppers. So if you're making a jalapeno popper or taking the seeds out of the popper, it works really good. You have one at your house, don't no, you? No. What? Uh -oh. But I That's make a lot of them because... I think this one would be good too. Mandy's husband likes jalapenos and I make a mean stuffed jalapeno. And every time I take the seeds out, I think, I wished I had Mandy's cheap meat scraper. I use it when I make them. I haven't made them in a while though. Now we're gonna scrape a little bit here, um, and then I'm gonna rinse him off. When you get, especially as a beginner, you're going to get to a point where you just don't know what to do anymore. You, Where do I go from here? Um, take them over to the sink and wash them, rinse them off. And we just have a garden hose sprayer on our sink. And, um, I'm always hungry, Jody, I'm always hungry. And um, we uh, sp spray them off and it's gonna open up. I mean, it's just gonna clear up everything for you and you're gonna realize how much you do or don't have to get out. Clint, <laughs> Clint Ricky says, super helpful video. I'm excited to become a fish guy. Clint. Yeah, Clint. Clint. You stay, you stay with the deer. <laughs> Clint Ricky is one of the finest white tail taxidermists, any yes, taxidermist really, yes. but unbelievable white tail taxidermist. Um, David McLean says, if you haven't bought your habitat rocks and driftwood from Matuska's, you are missing out. David McLean. David, who is that wow. guy? <laughs> and Robert Slogaris. Watching from Jackson, Michigan, learning a lot. Michigan. Friends all over the place. So, Joe Martin says that, Joe love Martin. my sharpen air tool, what a great idea. We also have, what was that? Um, Brian Clare, I bought the airbrush needle tool from you guys last week. Oh, yeah. Thanks to all of you for the live demos. I received it yesterday and fixed seven needles. Wow, that paid was for basically itself. junk. It's already paid for itself. Awesome product. Will you nice. show those off? So yeah, if you guys haven't, again, on our new products on the website, Sharpen Air. Mother's Day is coming up. But these are Sharpen Air. We have a Pache style and an Iwata style, and then pink or black in Iwata and other airbrush style. How do you do it? You basically take your bent needle, which you can go back to our 
live video from last week where we actually demoed it, but you take your bent needle and you put it in basically one and spin it around, then the second hole spin it around, third and fourth, and by the time you bring it out, it is perfect, brand new. But great tool, there's videos on how to do it. You can check it out. I mean, the videos are pretty helpful. $44.95. Okay, pretty soon you get to a point where you have a lot of loose meat laying in here, not quite sure where to go. Um, we're gonna rinse him off in a second. On these fin bases, I like to separate that meat with this skinning knife as far down as I can. Then I take just the tip, I put my fingers on the other side, on the show side, Take just the tip of those scissors, and I like to cut those fins way down. That will help your commercial bodies fit better. If you get those fin bases as clean as you possibly can. On yours and Tim's bodies, you have that all built up beautifully, just like the real fish. And um, if you put that much bone on top of that, it doesn't work. Yeah, you gotta get that cleaned out. Or you can cut it off the body too. Mm -hmm. If you're more uh -huh. comfortable cutting it off the body, um, you can do that too. You guys have 155, 160 viewers right now. Holy smokes. Um, Dan Hutzik says, hello, Tom and the gang. That Clint guy is crazy. <laughs> what guy? Clint. <laughs> that crazy white tail guy. Yeah, Dan Hutzik doesn't. Yeah, I'm not sure. We're going to clean this up for him when he gets that nice, clean fish skin back over here. It helps a lot to really keep your work surface as clean as possible. Work on a hard, smooth work surface rather than something that has any texture. It will really help your scales so they're not hanging up. Um, we've got a Formica countertop here. You can work on anything, a piece of melamine or um, any other uh, nice, clean, smooth work surface. Let me tell you a story. <laughs> your story scares me. This is a good story. There's a lot, of, lot to be learned in this story. Remember, you're lying and there's no take back seats. <laughs> I was home one evening many, 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 many years ago. Look how clean this is getting. Isn't that pretty? Nice, clean. And um, a person called me and they said, hey man, they said, how many scales can I lose on a northern man before it's no good? And I said, well, why are you losing scales? I don't know, man, but this Northern's my claim to fame, and it was a big, big, big 30-pound pipe. And I said, well, you shouldn't, you lose any. How come you're losing scales? I don't know, man. They're flying off this fish like Frisbees, man. I said, do you have a nice slick surface that he can slide on? Because if this sticks on something and you're putting a lot of pressure, you're gonna, you're gonna wreck something. No, man, he's too slippery. He said, he's sliding all over the place. I'm doing him on a piece of plywood. I said, ooh, that's not so good. I said, your, your, your skin's sticking to the plywood, but you're moving the, the skin with the knife and you're gonna wreck him. He said, yeah, man. I said, um, get him on a piece of Formica. And I said, you got a nice sharp knife. You know, you wanna go over him one or two times without doing a lot of damage. No, man, he said, I don't wanna ruin this fish. This is, this is like a big trophy. He said, I'm using a butter knife. I said, oh, you can't do that. I said, he'll be fine. Just slow down, nice, slick, slidey surface, razor sharp knife. Next day he called me up and he said, hey man, can you get me a 30 pound Northern? <laughs> um, so slow down, be careful, slick surface, sharp tools. Now I'm getting these fin bases. Thanks. Gary Stoll, does a sharpen air tool work on a Badger product? Yes, you're going to want to get the Iwata. So get the Iwata version. Yes. Pache needles are thicker, a little bit bigger, so that's why there's a Pache version, but all the other needles should be the Iwata version. Yeah, Pache has a, I call it a shoulder, that's not the proper term, but it's a step down in their needle. Their needle tips are nice and fine, but it has a, a little shoulder type thing that 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 version is designed for. This always happens when you guys are doing, have a fish on the table, but Charlie Cat says, I don't know how I ended up here. This was a suggested video. Are you guys <laughs> teaching taxidermy? Yes, yes we, we are. are. <laughs> Every Thursday, this is Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company, and we sell taxidermy supplies, woodworking, sculpting, crafts, 
tools, all that stuff. But every Thursday at 4.30, we go on here and we do live videos on how to tips and tricks, um, different products to use in the taxidermy world. We also have a taxidermy school, Northwest Iowa School of Taxidermy. If any of you are interested in starting your career, we do offer that as well. So give us a call, 1-800-488-3256. You're doing pretty good. Well, if clock we is ticking, need to have you skin fish on live every time you do it. Oh my then gosh. you could just pump them out. Then I can get faster, <laughs> couldn't I? Um, okay, now I'm going to show you. I'm going to get this eventually clean. I don't want to waste all our time, all our air time now. But all of this is going to be beautifully clean. But I'm going to move up to the head because we are running out of time. And between the gills, there are I call them triangles. If I stick my knife in the throat, you okay, Kirsten? <laughs> I think she's gonna drop the camera in the fish. Um, I'm gonna cut this triangle out, and that's actually the, it's the throat, but it's the bottom of his mouth, too. And I'm gonna get very up, way close to those gills, and I'm gonna clip this out. So we're gonna rebuild this on the body. I right? like rebuilding, and I've been talking the boys into building little attachments for their fish because fish throats because it would be the thing it. to do if you want to get up in there sure <laughs> oh look at that okay so this was one triangle that came out and you can see where it came from that leaves another triangle now in the bass's mouth he has these crusher teeth I'm going to stay between those crusher teeth now we've taken the floor of the mouth out now I'm going to take the roof of the mouth out You should do it because I'm kind of shaky. <laughs> so we're on a she third cameraman here. Yeah, third <laughs> cameraman for fish skinning. <laughs> it sounded like a good idea when we started it. Okay, now you're going to want to get as much tissue free from this. These little gill rakers. Now this is basically the same process that you would use whether it be a largemouth bass, a walleye, a northern, a crappie, most anything that we're going to use the real, the real skin and the real head on. It's going to be skin basically a version of this, aren't they? Yeah. Um, you know, Brett calls them hybrid fish. There's a big move right now to artificial fins, artificial heads, and use just a portion of the real skin. and. Um, that makes a, a very nice mount. Um, I've had people say, why would you ever use the real heads? Um, we've done it for 40 years, and I have. We get fish into repair. Brett, you've been working on some fish that have been, uh, they're 35, 40 yeah. years old, that yeah. the fins got damaged, and the heads and stuff are pretty good, aren't they? Yeah, fantastic. That we did that long ago. Um, now... I'm going to delve into the head a little bit here. I won't, I won't completely finish it. We'll move on to cheeks and eyes pretty quick. But I'm going to take this scissors under the skin, and I'm going to snip as close to the skin as I can, all the way up to the eyes, and then I'm going to attempt to get that big chunk of meat out. So I just stick it way up in here like this. Now, I hold my hand on the outside, and I will feel if I go through the skin... And the head doesn't really have, it has texture, but it doesn't have scale texture to copy if you do something wrong. So you're going to take that big piece out and basically one big chunk, aren't Well, you? I'm going to try. Nice. You wouldn't let me use a chisel because <laughs> it was... Kirsten wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> Picking her up off the floor. Do you guys keep the eyes in? Um, the eyes will come out in the next step um, in just a minute. Um, Mary Drake says it's easier just to take the head off. Yes, you can do that. People do that. How much time do you figure will be spent on this fish from start to finish? That depends on the, on the amount of detail painting, I think, more than anything else. Oh, blaming the paint. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to Crunch, Kirsten, I'm gonna crunch some bone. Are you gonna be okay? 
this is just taking the esophagus a little further up, is that right? No, I'm oh, uh, through the, the spine. 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 Spinal column, yeah. Now, Kirsten's dad has some really nice crappies here, and every time she looks at them on the wall, she's gonna hear these sounds, <laughs> these crunching sounds, and she's not gonna wanna go home for Thanksgiving and Easter and things like that. So to go back to time, um, what do you think, Tom? Do we, to get them skinned and mounted, um, carve the body, remember we did that in the previous steps. Um, think we can get that done in four hours? Skinned, carved, mounted? Yeah, yes, no, that's not the problem. So I have... <laughs> The problem, the, the problem is when Brett Wingfield decides each scale is a canvas that needs to be framed. Then things slow down. They're beautiful, but they slow down. So, near Drake, here in Texas, we run a 16-inch nail through a catfish head on a tree and skin it doing it the old-fashioned way. So she's wondering why y'all are going through all that trouble. So we can put it on the wall because this one is not going in the frying pan. <laughs> yes. Um, Shane Halstead wants to know if you do the same on a trout. Um, we would probably remove the head of a trout. And we would use artificial make... heads on trout and salmon. Yeah, Why? we would make a cast. They're very oily. Yep, yep they oil, they're very oily. They, there's a lot of shrimp, a tremendous amount of shrimp. By the time you trimmed everything away, I think you'd still be dealing with oils. And... Get in there. <laughs> <laughs> Kirsten. <laughs> oh. You got 290 views. I'm proud of you, Kirsten. I really am. She's doing good. I am too. It's, I didn't last long. People don't get to see Kirsten. We probably need to. Mm, that's perfectly fine. Have a little yeah. expose of camera <laughs> crew. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm going to rinse him once again real quick, and then we're going to show you quickly um, eyes and cheeks. I will take care of your table if you want to get your fish. Kirsten, your nose is going to stay in that position, <laughs> that curled up, wrinkled up position. <laughs> Mandy, are we um, giving something away this week? We are going to be giving something away, so stay tuned for the end, very end because we'll have a giveaway like every week. Um, but one of the things we are doing is just as kind of a thank you and a give back to all our customers for always posting and tagging and liking and sharing our stuff, we are keeping track till the end of June of who has the most shares, um, Matuska tags and all that. So we're doing $500 giveaway towards supplies. And really all you have to do is just go and share our stuff, um, maybe tag us in your products um, on Facebook. So kind of do that. I know um, John Bellucci did we had today's, was it today's? Yep. He mounted up a nice white tail and put it on there and tagged us in it. That's nice. good. We and got out the Art of the Big Cat book just to show Kirsten who John Lucci was. He's yep. the author of the Art of the Big Cat. Pretty neat. And we are kind of honored to have people like that Easy. comment on our products and stuff. Um, okay, eventually this is going to be Beautiful. All You want to get anything beige. This should be snow white when you're done. Every little crumb in here. If you mount with a chunk of meat on here, fish meat is 90% water and it shrinks dramatically. And so what'll happen is you'll mount him, he'll look real good. The meat will shrink, the body, the skin will follow it. You're gonna have a dent. Um, also, I didn't say before I started um, to make your fish not smell as fishy when they're mounted, um, you want to wash all that slime off. Slime is the biggest yeah. reason for your um, smell. So get up there and wash your gills out really, really good. I have slime in my gills. I'm going to want, before I put him into the pickle, I'm going to want to clean up those gills. Um, also, when you wash those gills and mount the fish with the gills in, those gills do not look like real fish gills anymore. Their customers love them. They can see the shredded gills, but uh, it's not a bad idea to do use artificial gills or do a closed gill. Yeah. Oh. Mouth fish nice. <laughs> to, take, to take the cheek meat out, the first thing I'm going to do is remove the eye. 
Kirsten? Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, this is a good time also, if you have calipers, you can measure that iris because most of the fish eyes are, are ordered by the iris and base size. And you can do that right now. Of the iris? And there's usually about a four, um, four millimeter difference between the base and the, and the iris. But that, this will give you a real yeah. good idea. So I'm gonna remove this eye along with all the optic mechanics. Kirsten, your eyes are popping out further than this fish's. <laughs> Mine too. Okay. Um, sorry, go ahead. Um, now let me try that uh, small cheek meat scraper. No, nope, I'm sorry, that one. Not that one, yeah. Um, you gonna keep that one then? Yeah, this you one. It. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> no, yeah, too late. I do need one. Um, this is a great tool. And you can stick it up. First you have your skin, then you have a patty of meat, cheek meat, and then you have the cheek bone. I'm going to stick this up in here. Those look and really I'm, nice. I'm gonna separate. I'm just feeling where it's at with my fingers. And then I'm gonna do the, go down below the patty of meat, try to separate it. And if you missed us talking about the tools earlier, we said the prices and all the tools that the guys like using for the skinny process. If you rewind and go back and look when we're done. And I like to work as much of this cheek meat loose as I can. Um, on some fish like a walleye, we challenge ourselves a little bit to see if you can't get the whole cheek out um, without uh, having to take it out in pieces. Um, another, this is another good operation for this smaller knife. It goes in that eye orbit pretty nice too. Um, most of the time I like to use my Chicago knife again, and this is hard on it. I use the back of my knife, I'm pushing against the top of the skin, and I'm holding my skin down on top of the back of that knife. What do you pickle your fish in? You could tell them that while I'm doing this. That's a good, good yeah, question. Yeah, that's a good question. There's all kinds of fish tans and fish pickles out there. Um, Tom, you've always, the one that we've used for school, I think is written, nope, those are bird baths. Um, but we've had, we've used the same recipe for forever, ever. Um, and that's pretty simple. It would be to five gallons of water, you would have about five ounces of borax. Mm -hmm. Um, a good solid cup of borax. None of these are real critical numbers, but an equal amount of salt. Um, Protex pre-soak, um, which is your bug proofer, um, and that would be about five ounces of Protex pre-soak. Um, a drop of Dawn and a little bit of a bactericide, so that Quat 64 is what we're using today. Um, and you, works you, real good. you actually have two bug proofers. Your borax is an exceptional bug proofer, and um, as well as that um, Protex pre-soak, so they're doubly protected. Um, you'll notice on this cheek, I, I got out as much meat as I could in my initial scraping, and then I like to take borax, and this is powdered borax. Um, like I said, not it's, it's finer than the granular borax, and I pack it up inside of the cheek, and then with any of the tools, the scrapers um, or the your knife, it, it helps grip that meat that's remaining up in there. Rachel Bourne says, I'm trapped in here. I don't know how I got in here, but I can't stop watching. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, Rachel, welcome. This is Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company, and we go live every Thursday at 4.30 Central Time. We are in Northwest Iowa, and we have a taxidermy school and a taxidermy supply company, and we basically are showing you tips and tricks of different methods and products and tools that we use. <laughs> Is it born like Jason born? Maybe, I don't know. Does it smell? Yes, a little. A little, not bad. <clears throat> oh, and then our fish pickle. How long do you put them in that old pickle? Well, we don't over soak them. Um, a large mouth bass like this, what do you think? We'd have it in there a half an hour, 45 minutes? I do, I think so. Um, especially your Esox fish, your northerns and muskies, do not over soak those. They'll take on water and you'll end up with blisters and fight that. but. Um, this, this fish pickle, you'll notice a change in the gills. The gills will start to whiten up. 
Um, as you'll start taking the impurities out, your skin will turn snow white and pretty. Um, and that's usually 20, 30 minutes of a large mouth like this, half hour, 45 minutes mm -hmm. at the most. Now, I always take my finger and feel in there and it should feel really clean. Um, if you feel meat, your meat will get trapped up in the top of the head here, shrink in, leave you a dent, and also down by the mandibles. So um, if you feel any, one more little borax splash in there and scrape it out. What's How about a degreaser? You got it. Uh, degreasers. They make several different fish degreasers, don't they? Um, yeah, I think that, that um, 77, Oh, Trubon, 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 yeah. Lipa, Lipa, Lipa salt. Lipa salt. Yep. Lipa salt. Um, that's a good degreaser for absolutely everything, not just, you know, birds and hides. It's it's good for everything. Um, Dawn's a great degreaser Dawn works all well. around. Um, Dawn dish soap. Um, trout and salmon, you can put a drop of Dawn in. Don't over soak them with Dawn. Dawn's an organic um, a degreaser, so it will actually break down grease. I had it break down a fish one time. Yeah. Like, yeah. like it literally fell apart yeah. like tissue yep. paper. Yep, so be careful with that. Um, but denatured alcohol is also a, a good degreaser that will help. A lot of people use solvents like they do birds, you know, like white yep. gas and things that works, but be careful. Yeah, any of the solvents are pretty flammable and dangerous. How are you doing over there? I'm doing good. You are moving. I was thinking of the camera girl. <laughs> Poor camera girl. Just keep looking at that eyeball in the corner of my eye. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna touch it? An eye on you. You keep those, don't you? We're gonna have fish sticks tomorrow for <laughs> dinner for you. This um, <laughs> um, Mandy kind of grew up around this, so she's a little, a little callous, but still squeamish a little bit, but a little callous. <laughs> Well, you're wrapping up pretty good. Nice Is there anything else we want to cover? Well, Tom's getting the second cheek done. Well, a couple things. Um, we got asked if we're doing the Texas show or Missouri. We are not. You judged the Missouri last year, didn't you? No. I judged no. Missouri this year. Missouri Brett is your judge this year, so we'll send some <laughs> stuff with him for sure. Um, Texas, we've never been, but we have talked about going. Um, next week is the Nebraska show, and yep. the Nebraska show Columbus. is? In Columbus, Col Nebraska. Columbus, Nebraska. Yep. And these two are going. Um, Tom is doing a yeah. a rebuilding oh, seminar, an epoxy seminar for mm -hmm, fish heads. Mm -hmm. um, it wouldn't hurt if any Nebraska people were out was. there. So any of you going to the Nebraska show, they're getting ready. But it looks like it'll be a fun, hands-on yep. seminar with. No, those are those are cast fish heads of real fish heads that have dried. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna learn how to set eyes, you're gonna learn how to build up the bottom of the jaws, the top of the jaws. Oh, I'm gonna end up making another dozen of these, aren't I? You are going to <laughs> end up helping me too because in Minnesota, um, I didn't have a lot of help. Nebraska people, let us know if you're coming. But also call ahead because we'll bring pre-orders. Um, the guys will bring yeah. the trailer and Supplies, so we'll have booths set up. You'll get the show discount, free shipping, all that fun stuff. Um, Nebraska people, we got exceptional, exceptional mule deer, um, exceptional whitetail, exceptional antelope. Yeah. Um, if you and, use them, you won't switch. And you're gonna save so much shipping. Shipping, um, it'll amaze you. show discount, yep. um, real opportunities. And for those of you far away, if you haven't used our forms because maybe we're too far away, Northwest Iowa, um, give me a call and talk to me, Mandy, um, about pallet shipping. We're doing pallet shipping all the time. So give us a call and we'll work pricing with you on that because there's extra deals that go along with the pallet. Pallet shipping is cheaper than speedy. It is cheaper than speedy. And if you can get together with some other tax service in your state and have one drop off where they um, drop off a pallet, you know, we can get, I don't know, we just ordered Salt more. Lake City, Utah, um, Jeremy Judkins is, has our mule deer form. So if you're around or close to there, um, you can contact him and he's holding them for you so you can go pick them up instead of paying shipping It's already done and ready for you. So what's the show discount? 10%? 10% They mm -hmm. save 10% off of a deer mannequin and another 10 bucks of shipping. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. that's a huge deal And it's Nebraska, not all of Nebraska is in speedy zone And our, not to toot the horn too loud, but our mannequins are already 7 to 10% cheaper <laughs> Uh, Ron Hawkins here is asking how um, we can get 
fish head seminar at his show. Ooh, which show is that? California. California. You know, the best way to get Matuska taxidermy supply to your show is by asking Tom Matuska to be a judge. Because then he's forced to go and then my mom, Vicki, goes right with him and so she'll set up a booth and he'll do judging and a seminar and that's the way to do it. But um, give again, call. give us a call, Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company. We're going to be giving away, uh, doing a giveaway here shortly. Um, if you're looking to do taxidermy school, we offer advanced course. Even if you know stuff, we can bring your skill level to the next. So give us a call. Um, order online, www.matuskataxidermy.com. A lot of the new products, oh my gosh, I'm spraying. A lot of the new <laughs> products that we talked about, this is our new habitat that we talked about earlier, it is available online. Go to our website, supplies, and then click what's new, and it'll show you all that stuff. Um, again, Kathy Call won our, last week we gave away a Vixen knife. And Kathy call on it. So Kathy, give us a call tomorrow. Talk to Kirsten. And we'll figure out how to get this baby to you. This week, we're going to be doing two giveaways. Two? Two. Because we went extra long skinning the fish. We did kind of go extra long. Two giveaways. And it's going to be <laughs> your choice of these. Oh, those are cool. Yeah. Our carbide knife sharpeners. Remember, Mother's Day, if you guys aren't remembering this, Mother's Day is this week, this Sunday. Sunday. Oh gosh, so you're too late, but maybe you can do a makeup, order stuff, and get it. It's this Sunday? It's this Sunday. Oh, mm. We could get it out mail, I suppose, if they're close. But yeah, these are great gift ideas, great stacking stuffers. Christmas is right around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas in July. Uh, give us a call. They come in the four colors, and uh, we'll get them out. But we're going to be giving away two. So... All you have to do, I'm gonna keep it a little. I was showing earlier, if you're not seeing the comments, so if you're watching, oh my gosh, if you're watching and you wanna see more picture, you just swipe sideways. There's the comments, goodbye comments, hello comments. So I want everyone to go to your comments, pull up your comments. You're gonna hit the little thumbs up button. Couple hit times. it a couple is that times. How the, is that how we get the bubbles? The bubbles. And then also hit the share button. 